What do you, uh, what do you do in real estate? What am I, what? Uh, what do you, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got, I've got a cough from allergies, but uh, what do you do in real estate? I'm a lender. Nice. Private lender, commercial lender. Uh, we do mostly residential, but we can do commercial too. That's awesome. What company are you with? Uh, Elite Lending. Nice. We've been on Maui for 25 years. Awesome. So, and you are. Uh... Yeah, I'm more interested. I just bought my first investment property. So I'm kind of here for uh, just learning how to scale that more. That's awesome. That's what we love doing. <laughs> what did you buy? Oh, just a small two little uh, two bedroom, one bath in Kionakai. Oh, okay. So that's a rental, short term rental or long term? No, it's long term. Solid. That's awesome. Exciting. So you want to scale it by buying a few more properties similar? You know, I'm actually kind of looking towards my future in a couple of years. I'm planning on probably selling it and maybe doing a 1031 exchange and seeing where I want to invest that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Are you sticking with mostly Hawaii or you want to move to the mainland and invest? Um, right now, I personally invested on Maui, um, but I have my parents have rental properties in Arizona. Mm. Arizona's nice. Phoenix, Scottsdale? Like staff, actually. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to Sedona in two weeks. Oh, nice. Sedona's lovely. I used to ditch high school every day and go down to the creek. Oh, yeah? That's perfect. We love high school ditchers. <laughs> <laughs> I barely I barely had a gra uh, GPA getting out of high school. But, you know, you graduate, you graduate, right? What's uh what's your favorite thing to do in Sedona? We're taking about 25 people there. It's just beautiful no matter where you go. I mean, there's a what they call a creek, but it's like a small river running through the canyon. And so you'll just see beautiful red rock sculptures, structures, whatever they are. I get they're not natural, so not their sculptures or structures, but um, they're actually oxidized crystals, so that's what gives them that red color. So it's a really like sacred place. There's a lot of good energy there, but the river runs through the whole town, Oak Creek Canyon. So anywhere you go is going to be gorgeous. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. Uh, we went there last summer, I think it was, and did some jeeping and that kind of thing. And man, it's it's beautiful, hot but beautiful. It'll be perfect by this time of year. Yeah, I'm excited. <clears throat> well, thanks for joining us, Annie. We're glad you're with us. Feel free to ask any questions along the way, and we'll uh, probably, if you want to talk more about what you're doing, happy to do that too. <clears throat> do we have a different Alexander Young, or did he change? Oh, he became Joe. Hey, you guys. You guys all at the same airport? No, just me. <laughs> I'm oh. in LAX right now trying to figure out my flight. I might have to jump off in a little, in a little while, jump back on. But we got Alexander. Oh, he's in the office. Delayed? Did you get delayed? No, I'm trying to shift my seat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six-hour <laughs> flight, you know? Uh, yeah, I have a question for you guys. Is anybody going to Brandon Turner's seminar in Denver in May, first week of the weekend of May? I don't Just think we had planned on it, but maybe maybe a couple of us might go now. Yeah, I if can send anybody a, a link. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I got invited and I bought a ticket, so I. Um, Gonna go check it out. I just need to rent a room with somebody. Drop so. a link, Cammy. We'll check it out. Cool. Yeah, that's actually a really good event. We might, Corey, we may really want to send somebody like Alexander to go network. It's gonna be pretty solid. Alex is great at networking. I wanna go. Brock, no, come yeah. on. <laughs> you and I go to events like that. We just want to go to the spa. So let's just be serious. <laughs> 
a guy. Alex guy actually shot. goes and networks. Corey and I are like, where's where are we eating and where's the spa? <laughs> guys, you guys can come and we can all do the networking and meet you at the spa. Okay. Done. Perfect. <laughs> it should be I a good event. Joe, I think Joe's in on that that setup too. Oh, all day. I got you. Uh, <laughs> Joe, where are you at right now? You at home? Me, I'm in Tampa, Florida. You know, with the alligators. So have a good time. Nice. I yeah. like it. I'm gonna be I'll be in Tampa. I don't know. I'm gonna try to get Corey to come down. We'll be there at that. Come on. I've been Tampa. trying to get Corey to come down. Come on, alligator land, man. Shoot. Corey, Tampa, third week of uh third week of June is the uh the kind training for New Well. Okay. You okay. Come. Then we can go, then we can go to Disney cool. World. Oh, oh yeah. gosh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, mean, that's... I love Tampa. It's a romantic city. And I get to see Joe. There you go. I Sounds love Disney, Disney World too. And I love seeing everybody. So, or are yeah. you saying that it's a romantic city and seeing Joe in the same sentence without a comma was a little <laughs> interesting? But that's that's all right. I'll, 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 I don't care. I'll go. I'll go without <laughs> yeah. the <laughs> No, it's okay. I've got. I'm got no judgment. I'm just saying you guys just you know keep keep it to yourselves. What happens in Florida stays in Florida. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what we say. We say about about Vegas too, but you know. It never, it well, never really. Same thing in Alligator Land. So, good policy. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's see who's here. Ben's here. Sue's here. Lisa's here. I think the time zone change is jacking up us a, a few people. I know it jacked me up. <laughs> Nobody in Hawaii has to worry about it, but Joe and I have to worry about it. Yeah. One doing the same. All, All right, right, guys. <laughs> all right let's uh let's just see what everybody's doing anybody got anything that they want to uh share that they've got going on deals questions good deeds I have a question i'm yeah. going through special permitting and i have a whole list of abbreviations for construction buildings and mine doesn't seem to fall into any of these listings. Is there a contractor on here that would be able to help me with this or that I could connect with afterward? And this is on Maui? No, it's going on the Big Island. Yeah. It's a special permit. It's not like I'm not having applied for my regular permitting yet. It's just for my epic permit, which is my special permit. And what's that, what that does is it's going to facilitate me for a permit to do my build because it's needed by a lot of uh, quite a few communities yeah so i just need some help with one part of the permitting process yeah you know i don't I mean i don't see anybody on here that is big island focused on builds but what what we've been doing in a lot of our the fact that we're all in different markets is and i think you've probably already done this have you already called dpp just check in with them ask them for all the details uh, one of those pre-development meetings. Okay. Yeah. I, well, what I've done is I've connected with somebody and uh, the planning department, but nobody's gotten back to me. Gotcha. Are you on the big island? No, I live on Maui. That's what I thought. So I think yeah, I'm just so, going to have to take a trip over there. Yeah. That's what I was just about to say. We do the same thing. Yeah. I just, I'm going to do the same thing in Vegas. I got to walk into North Vegas just because I'm not getting any calls back. But the nice thing about when you walk in, you take a queue, right? You take a ticket and then you just know that you're a number in line and you bring your laptop and snacks and maybe a sleeping bag and hang out until you call your name. A hotel room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it's fast. I was really surprised. One time I was there and there literally was nobody else. I pulled a number and they called me and I was like, wait, I brought snacks. I don't even have time to eat my snacks. But uh, And then there's other times where you walk in and you're like, Oh my gosh, this thing's packed. Like, what's going on? So, uh, you know, you just never know. But yeah, I, I, that would be for sure. Just go in and see okay. someone in person. Because once you make contact with somebody in the department that you connect with, then it's easier to get their number so you can then email them directly and call them. Okay, so that's the best advice. Thank you so much. 
That is what yeah, I'll do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's worth the trip. And hey, it's a tax write-off, right? So Absolutely. So next yeah. Friday, I'll probably be over on the big island doing coffee talk from the Department of Planning. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <clears throat> that's yeah, fun. No. Oh, Alexander and I were just in uh we're just in Kona. It was beautiful. Oh. Yeah, it's nice over here. How's your weather up there in Seattle? Uh it's been really sunny actually, much better than California. So it's been really nice. <clears throat> but I've been in SoCal a lot and SoCal's been beautiful. I gotta head to Vegas this Sunday. Yeah. I don't even know how long Corey's planning on staying there. But he's yeah, gone. it's pretty good. He's fine he already gone. Yeah, he's already gone. Alex, how how are we doing on uh how are we doing on our Kauai project? Uh we're we're making progress. I mean, we have an offer for the one on Big Island, and I'm waiting for a couple people right now for offers for Kauai. That's awesome. It'll be a good it'll be a good story to tell everybody about once we get everything done in terms of the development. Oh yeah. That's gonna be a wow, wow project for sure. Five million dollar short term rentals. That's how we roll. I, I want one. We need one. Can you we tell me about that? We don't just want one, need one. We will have one. Come oh, yeah. on. Let's, let's manifest 100%. this. Thing. Uh, one of our clients is developing 46 cottages on one of his parcels in Kukiula, which is a nice, it's a country club over in Kauai and Poipu, but it's in an opportunity zone and it's legal nightly vacation rental. So the homes average between four hundred to six hundred and sixty thousand a year in rental income. So, and it's it's actually, it's just a really beautiful area too. I mean, the golf course is amazing. The clubhouse is beautiful. It's just a really cool project. And so, uh, one of Keikoa's mentors and uh, close friends is the developer of it. Yeah. Which shows, take good care of the people in your life today because you never know if they become real estate moguls tomorrow. And then they they do crazy things like, uh, he uh, he never even talked about outer islands. He only owned a couple shopping centers on Oahu, and then now he's like massive developer. It's very exciting. Yeah, he is definitely a massive developer, and he owns more than a few shopping centers. Yeah, I say a few, meaning that he basically owned every shopping center on the island of Oahu, with the exception of Ala Moana Center. Yeah, he even developed Coco Marina. Yeah, did Coco Marina, Mililani Town Center, Waipahu Town Center. Uh, he did, there was another one he did somewhere out there, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Super humble guy, super solid. How well do you know Gary's story? Like, I want to know, I want to hear it. You know, like from him, maybe. Yeah, dude, one one day when we're all in Kauai, sitting up on the golf course, watching the sunset in one of his 15 extra vehicles that he has on his $50 million piece of property, he'll tell you his story. And then he'll sound like just a farmer guy that, that you would see at a feed store walking his dog and probably walk right by him and never give a second thought. As unassuming as it gets. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, it was cool. Alex got to get to know him. He likes Gary. <clears throat> Gary likes Alex because Alex knows how to drive tractors <clears throat> and trucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think I just need to show up on a Friday and be in the excavator when he shows up. But Gary, yeah. I haven't found a loan yet, but I'm over here earning some points, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll adopt you in and you'll have to change your last name. I already told him, you know, he doesn't have a son. So I said, you know, I'm I'm up, I'm I'm up for grabs. Pretty high quality here. <laughs> I don't know. That's super uh, funny. <laughs> All right on. Sounds good. Anybody else doing uh anybody else got some deals to talk about on this Friday? Leads needs good deeds. Oh yeah, Juan. Man, there's so much going on. You're flying back and forth from where? Ever? From Yeah, hey, I'm gonna Seattle come to Vegas. To... How long are you staying in Vegas, bro? I'm I'm leaving right now. I'm in LA now. 
Oh, I thought you're going to Vegas, brah. No, you got to coordinate better. I get in there on Sunday night. I don't even know what date. It oh, it's Friday. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But nobody needs anything. Nobody needs anything. Dante, what are you up to? If you can unmute. I seen you out there in the meetup. Dante's doing some cool things. Hey, it's been cool to see Kamo High and Tristan on their HGTV show. It's been pretty awesome. Hey, yeah. guys. Dante, Thank you guys for Yeah. Been learning the ground of construction in the big island. So going to probably jump in there maybe late next year, this year or ne early next year. That's Where? awesome. <clears throat> um, you know, side, so Inaloa HPP area. What are like what is the lots going for nowadays out there? Uh, I know lower side is around like say forty five k, and then um, HPP is like around eighty ninety. So okay, not too bad. Hey Dante, I get a lot of uh, emails and stuff about lots over there. I can share those with you if if you don't get them. I get sent lot lots for sale over there in Inaloa. Hawaiian Acres, all down there in Pahoa District, Puna District. Nice. And you're doing a ground up construction. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, I'm gonna start uh, late late this year or early next year. I'm just learning the um the the steps right now. Yeah. Do you have a contractor's license? No. <laughs> okay. I, I I get a lot of offers from people, but nobody seems to have a license. But uh, hey, I would love to have uh, love to connect with you if you don't mind. I'll put my information in the chat, and please reach out to me. Sure. Okay, and I'll I can share all these emails with you. Okay. Thank you, Dante. Thank you. Good stuff. We're pretty easy today. Anybody have any other? <clears throat> Andy, we're not usually this mellow. <laughs> usually we have uh, we have deals to go over and people have questions and then we, but it's basically just a, a free for all coffee talk where we get together once a week and catch up. And so it's pretty cool. Uh, ben, who's on, is out of Seattle. He's an agent. Um, Joe's lending. Alex is lending. So we're just kind of a fun, eclectic group of folks that are all over. And sometimes a, it just depends. Some weeks is a smaller group. Some weeks is a bigger group. Some weeks we're super talkative. Some weeks we go on a tangent and have nothing in particular uh, to address, but then we go talk about something for a long period of time. So it's pretty fluid. It's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. What's uh? What's the? Who's has anyone bought anything lately? We know Annie has. <laughs> we bought into a deal. So we bought into four house development or redevelopment out in Makaha and a two house in Makaha or Miley. So I think that was the last ones. And we sold four in Makaha. Yay. Yay. We got one more, yeah? yeah. One more. One more if we could get the damn CO, bro. Oh, yeah. What's going on with that? Leila's in the air right now. It's not coming. Yeah, and I keep, yeah. I mean, we're we're in a really weird place because our permits are under the street Hinamoy. The house initially yeah. was Kapolai. So we should list it as Hinamoy, but it doesn't come up on records. So Honolulu Board of Realtors won't let us list a property that does not exist. So. Oh, you just reminded me of something. This is what I want to talk about. What do you think about the, I mean, we'll fix that problem. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix what do it. You it's, think... not, it's, oh, it's not a big deal. It's, whatever. It's, all, it's part of the fun stories that we get to tell about how we own a house that on paper exists, but in the world of real estate, it does not exist yet. So it's kind of it's kind of hilarious thing to try to argue with the MLS to be like, no, here's the documents. It actually exists on the street. They're like, 
no, you can't list a house that doesn't have tax records. We're like, mm, all right, I got you. <laughs> so weird. Anyway, so you're going to talk about Corey? <laughs> well, but it's funny. It's like 13 years ago, I probably would have been freaking out about something like that. You know, and now it's just like, uh, that's that could be a problem because if we can't fix it, like maybe, maybe we can't list. I don't know. Well, but, I think what, well, I have a strategy. So I think we're going to go on market this weekend. We're just going to go on market to what's on tax record and let people know it's coming. Okay. Are we going on market this weekend? I think so. It just, the, what's hard is that we just don't want to get in a position where we sell it and it doesn't, we can't get a CO because people like, remember the other four houses? They're like, we need to close and there's no CO. <laughs> so yeah. I say we just put it on. Well, we were supposed That's to get gonna sell two quick. weeks ago. That's the problem is it's going to sell quick. So someone's going to yeah. be, we're going to have the same thing as last time, but Anyways, what were you gonna say? Um, let's talk about the 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 ruling with NAR. What's your thoughts on the commissions? <laughs> Is there any other realtors on here? I'm here. What do you think, Dante? Oh, Dante, what do you think about the well first of all for yeah, in case and I haven't been following it too closely, so um if you know the summary, Dante, if you're aware and you want to share, maybe brief, briefly go over what was going on and then your thoughts. So it was a lawsuit like they're saying that um, we were the realtors were like um, pretty much like fixing the co realtors commission. So they're making the sellers pay for the buyer's commission. That's pretty much in the. In, in a nutshell, not giving the sellers an option of not paying the the um, buyer's commission. So from my understanding of the whole lawsuit now is they, you know, they complied. So a lot of people is not really understanding the whole concept. It's just saying that on the MLS, we can't put the buyer side commission, but the sellers can still pay for the sellers, the, you know, the um, buyer's commission. So they just can't input it on the MLS. That's one. And the other one is there's other things of way that, you know, the, the buyers, the real, the buyer's realtor can get paid. So, you know, they just have to, they can discuss it with an <laughs> escrow or, you know, how I was thinking is if worse comes to worse, you just put it on their um, concession or you, you know, the buyers can get different types of credits so that it can um, uneven out the, the buyer's commission. I so can there's different. A little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> so previously, the seller would pay for both the seller's agent commission and the buyer's agent commission. So it's like 6%. And then they would they would split it amongst themselves. Um, now it's illegal to do that. So basically the seller can no longer pay for the buyer's real estate agent. So the buyer now has to pay for their own real estate agent, which is usually 3%, but it's now negotiable. So you can kind of negotiate with your buyer's agent to see if they would take a lower commission, which hasn't really been the case in the, in the past. Um, that realtor that's representing the buyer can also negotiate um, still for the seller to pay the buyer's agent commissions. Um, so you really have to get a strong um, negotiator now as a, as a buyer's real estate agent. Um, in the other solution, if you don't have that 3% out of pocket as a buyer, which kind of, you know, once again, we're kind of pricing out first time home buyers, you know, and people trying to get in, you can ask the seller for concessions and the concessions will be either you know, you, you still offer the same amount on the property um, and they'll just give you that in concessions or they'll tack that on to the end of the loan. And so as long as the appraisal doesn't come in too low, you can do that and tack it on to the end of the loan. But there is a maximum for seller concessions depending on the loan type. So for government loans, it's usually around 6%, but conventional, it depends on how much your down payment is. It's anywhere from three to 9%. Investment properties, the max seller concessions is 2%. So if you're buying an investment property and you have a buyer's agent and you're trying to get the seller to pay for your buyer's agent, 
they're they're maxed out at two percent that the seller can give you. So if your buyer's agent's trying to get three percent, you they're gonna have to you're gonna have to come out with that one percent, and then get two percent in seller concessions. That's a great summary. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> they're, they're also they're also looking towards um lenders coming up with special loans to pay for um the buyer's commission. Yeah, and those that would just be the seller concessions, but we're maxed out, unfortunately, you know, depending on the loan type. But if you're looking at an investment property, we're maxed out at two percent. Yeah. The interesting thing is is that this is what happens to all of us in the commercial side. So when we negotiate multifamilies and commercial buildings and shopping centers, it's the buyer's agent always has to negotiate their own compensation, which actually is kind of favorable because I've had it where sometimes we negotiate into the offer under the LOI, like you were saying, Annie, with the seller and just saying, hey, can you cover a percent and a half? Which then they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, if overall the number works out, percent and a half, not so bad. And then I can negotiate with the buyers I represent for another percent and a half, and then I get three. Or I could even do, you know, two percent. And then we just got to figure out, you know, how that works into the financing piece. But um, but yeah, the commercial side, we've had to negotiate the commissions for a long time. So we got a little spoiled on the residential side because we just see whatever's in the MLS listing. It's like, hey, it's two percent. I'm not going to show that house. This one's four percent. I'm going to show this house. So now it's like buyers agents just actually have to work a little bit harder, if you will, to make sure that they earn their commission, which I'm all for because I think sometimes buyers agents are just a little lazy sometimes. And they're just like, yay, especially in a good market, right? They get 3% for literally just writing up paperwork because they just, <laughs> they showed one house and they made an offer. So yeah, it'll be interesting for sure. It's going to be a rough ride for the newer agents because that's how we usually get our um, first customers, right? We would sit in um, open houses for other realtors and get, you know, get our get our clients from there. But now the newer agents are going to even suffer even harder because who would want to pay for a rookie? It's true. Very true. <laughs> Which will mean there'll be a, there'll be a blessing to work on a team because then the rookies will benefit from the leads that come from a team. So that can work out. And then sellers and buyers are going to want to work with teams because there's a more diverse portfolio of experience. So it'll be interesting. It's going to change things up for sure. I think they have to sign a contract too with their buyer's agent, like exclusive, kind of like exclusive right to sell, but it's like basically saying I'm contractually, you know, have to use you as a buyer's agent once you start. It's another part of the ruling. Do you, has anybody seen this? When does all of this actually take effect? July. Okay. So we have a little bit of time. So quick, take your buyers out fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sell those houses. I'm wondering how much it's going to change now that, you know, you guys have kind of given a better summary than what I've read, but I wonder if it's even going to change that much. Anything. It's not going to change housing prices much. I don't think, I think it's going to have much more to do with just the agents. And just like Dante said, newer agents will have a harder time because most of the newer agents they're they're going to run out of their small network. they are a couple of friends and their family members who want to buy and then right after that, they're like, oh, okay, now I got to go actually try to negotiate having a buyer's contract with somebody. And an exclusive buyer's agent contract is really hard to get, you know, unless you're super experienced and have a lot to offer. I mean, most buyers, like I'm, you know, we're all buyers. Like, do you really want to just sign on with only Dante? It's like Dante's cool. He's got a great heart, but Dante only knows about maybe this neighborhood and that neighborhood. I need an agent who also knows this other neighborhood or Dante may only be Oahu. And I also want to have an agent on, you know, the other part like Maui or Dante only knows Hawaii Kai because he's rich and he doesn't want to go to Makaha and I need somebody in Makaha. So it's like, it's going to be a whole different dynamic when it comes to that relationship dynamic. I think it's going to get messy for a while is probably what's going to happen. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to be like before, you know how they had the flat fee listing? 
if there's going to be some agents coming on the buyer side with the flat fee. Oh, interesting. Hmm. As a buyer's agent or a selling agent? As a buyer's agent buyers. coming in as a flat fee. So that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's something I've been hearing around too. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's probably a really smart way to build. If you're a new agent to kind of build some, some people is like, Hey, I'm a thousand dollars flat, you know, which is really sad. It's going to start. It's a race to the bottom is what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I, um, I don't think it, I think it's different because we're different type of buyers. You know, if you're a, a, a retail buyer, then you don't know what neighborhood you want. You don't know what you're looking for sometimes. So you need that buyer's agent to look for you. You know, you kind of get an idea what you want, but for us, well, we should know what we're looking for, right? Like the specs of the property, what type of real estate, uh, what's our, you know, how we're going to find the deal, fund the deal, reposition it. Um, so I think it's different on our side. I mean, like I would, if an agent said, if I asked an agent to set, submit an offer for me and they said, oh, sign an exclusive, then maybe I'd just send the offer myself instead. You know, like I could totally do that. You know, I can negotiate my own deals. Like you can negotiate your own deals. But at some point, it's helpful to have, you know, a realtor on your team representing you on the buy side, but it's not necessary as a professional buyer, you know, like we are. So if we do our homework and we know what we're doing, um, that, but for us, like if we're going to work with, if a realtor brings us a deal, then of course we're going to close with them, right? And we'll sign exclusive, but I'm assuming the exclusive is for that transaction or yeah. Yeah. So that, that's not too bad. I don't think it's going to cause much ruckus on our, uh, on the investor side, perhaps on the, the retail side. It just really hurts anyone trying to get in the market for the first time. Like once it, you know, the 3% is a big chunk of change to come out of pocket with, you know, and people don't realize, like, I mean, they talk about rates being so high and it's like, crazy that we're in the sevens and eights and stuff like that but if they were willing to put three percent that's three points they could buy it down to five percent yeah you know what I mean? like there's a lot you can do with that chunk of change so anyone trying to enter in the market is just getting harder and harder you know what that is so yeah. true annie that's so true i mean like that, okay now if it puts stress on even more stress upon buyers then it's a big problem because there's already enough stress on the buyers so and it's it's looking like it's they're not going to start dropping rates till maybe after May or maybe I'd May. say even like yeah maybe this summer but honestly I think probably just right before the election is where we're going to see any kind of big movement. Um, I agree I, on I that. Saw, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be the last quarter. But you know, I I did on the NPLA call they did have a guy who um he had the sofa chart up. And you can see the trends and it, it'll, it kind of projects and it's projecting that rates will probably start dropping at the end of May in June. Um, and then just like small, small drops, I mean, 25 bips and then down to like then more aggressive all the way till like September. So that's what's just, it's the patterns are projecting. I don't know, you know, if that, I mean, there's so many ways that this thing can go, especially during an election year. And uh, I think this election year is just, it feels, it just feels different, <laughs> you know, like kind of like something's go, uh, like going to happen, you know? And I was even thinking, I hate to be this guy, like the pessimist in the group, but I don't want to be a pessimist, I'm more realist, you know, it's like, if you were another country, or like not another country, just a person, you know, um, who hated America, which there are many out there, right? Wouldn't you think now is the time, you know, because you got Trump, who's kind of crazy, who's looking like he might be the next president. We got, I mean, I apologize. Usually I'm not, I don't bring up politics, but so I apologize. I think it's just obvious, though. It's like we don't have leadership in our country right now. So I would say right now is the time 
if if you were a bad a bad guy you know <laughs> um borders are open millions of people coming in like you don't think one in a million's one of those guys right so i'm just thinking to just be cautious you know out there <laughs> kind of waiting for the the time bomb but hopefully you know it doesn't happen i'm always prepared for the worst and hope for the best kind of guy <laughs> Roderick, what's up, brother? Aloha, Corey. <laughs> Aloha, brother. <laughs> How you doing, man? How's everything going over there? Oh, I'm loving life. Loving life. Right. I'm on my way home. So <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. That's, we uh, finally are scheduled to close on our refi. It's been going on forever on Friday, so... We'll see a week from today. Fingers crossed. Everything's going to turn out. So Nice. Oh, What's congratulations. You? You, you buy any new deals? What's going on? I was just telling, yeah, the group that we, I, it's not just, I partnered with Vernon. So uh, he had, we have four houses out in uh, Makaha and Miley. Uh, we got another two houses in Miley. So we just partnered with him on that one. We're just equity partners. Sick. And, uh, He's crushing it, man. So th that those are uh buy fix sell. Uh yeah, buy fix sell. How Flip did you guys on. find the houses? So the four house was actually Vernon's. Um and it was he bought it and then I think he needed to refinance. So he came to us and we were just talking about the deal and I asked them and got, you know, so wiggled my way into that one. <laughs> oh, and great. then uh we had, and then he had, there was two that have been kind of sitting a long time off Farrington and we just, um, Keiko and I had a project, like a four house project off Farrington, like right next to that one. So we know that one mm -hmm. very well. So Vernon was going to buy that one too. So I just asked if we could partner. He did, you know, equity partner. So worked out. Cool. So they were sitting on the MLS for a bit. Uh, the one off Farrington was, yeah, that one was, has been on and off listed for years. Um, it was a project that uh, I think a developer just failed on. So it was taken oh. back. Someone bought it. Actually, Abe Lee bought it. Abe Lee is a realtor mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And, um, I, I took his class to get my real estate license. I know Abe Lee. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Everybody knows Abe Lee. So, yeah. What's up, Kikoa? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Did you buy your multi family yet? No, I've been sending out a few letters. Thank you so much for the email with the with the link. I actually, what do you guys think about this? I signed up for Crexy, like Pro or whatever. It's like two hundred dollars a month, and you get access to all the data. But it seems like. It's not accurate. I mailed some letters and I made some calls and it seems like the letters are coming back and the calls aren't leading to actual people. What do you guys think of that? What I is don't Crexy? love Crexy as much as I love CoStar, personally. Oh. And CoStar is linked with LoopNet, right? They they own each other? Yeah, you know, I don't know that. I just know that CoStar... We just paid the bill. I think it was fifteen hundred bucks a month. Crazy. So it ain't cheap, but we do get leads off of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing: you could get a cheaper data service, but if the data is junk, <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing: is we use so many different things: prop stream, prop radar, prop this and that, and just was not having good luck with them, and it just felt like we were not getting anywhere, and. Somebody else said, you know, try this. And <laughs> it's only a one year commitment, which is a lot, but you know, 20,000 bucks is not bad if you actually get a lead and you actually close on it. Oh, totally. So are you yeah. guys doing postcards and calling, doing all the stuff? Uh, we don't do postcards anymore. Honestly, dude, I get postcards. Like I'm looking at, this is a pack of, this is just today's mail. And this oh. is, uh, and this is just the, this is just the Washington house. I get mail and it's rent checks, not Vegas. bills, right? Rent checks come in free. They come auto deposit. These are all right. <laughs> junk oh. mail, like investors saying, we want to buy your property. Like 
every angle you could get. My grandmother used to live in your house. We want to buy your house. I'm like, BS. Sure she really? is it though. Oh wow, people do that. Oh, dude, they're trying every angle to be personal and photos of their kids. And I'm like, dude, come on. I'm not new at this game. I, I it's that's not gonna work. <laughs> if you if your mom, if your grandmother really grew up in a house, you would just come to the house and knock on the door and be like, I want to see inside. Like I've done that before. It's kind of fun. But uh wow, Kiko. Okay, you just totally made me shift gears right now. Because, yeah, that's, <laughs> that was our play, and I'm really glad was that you your told letter? me that. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. It's probably your letter, bro. Do you want me to – let me pull out your letter. Is it here? Did I get one? Uh, is is yours the one so. with you, you and your wife and a photo? It oh, is you did get kid. one. That's funny. I no, you didn't get one. I was just <laughs> guessing I did you and your wife in a photo. No, yeah, you, you, you totally hit the nail on the head. <laughs> but – um. So how do I get an off-market deal? <laughs> That's I mean, let's go. question. I have a question. So, because we talked about this before, um, because I'm on the, I'm kind of on the spent, I'm on the side of like, yeah, if you, if you put a photo of your family, it makes it more personable. So how come, what, why wouldn't that help? I get the, the grandma lived in my house, the house, you know, I would never do that, but <laughs> well, it's just too I mean, many. Yeah. You get to, there's just too many of the same thing. It's oh, just that so everybody's cool. doing that already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you That's got true. the really like oh shucks, I just the garbage the just best went out. marketing piece I ever oh shoot, I gotta jump off in a second, but the best marketing piece I ever had that had the best conversion rates was a yellow postcard. With a block of black text, no. Yeah, dude, you and I, you and I use that no, several times. Yeah, we, we got crushed it with that. Yeah, yeah, we made a lot what of money off that postcard. What, what honestly, the text Corey, did? that's because you and I were doing that letter. What five? That was six a long time years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was back before people really, you know, before the whole Brandon Turners of the world and the, you know, I mean, <laughs> yep. we we, we were kind of. Corey and I were kind of on the front end back in the day of you know doing postcards. We didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Are those, you guys are those the OGs. <laughs> we're OGs, bro. We really oh, we are. We old. We OGs old. now. And so yeah, so those worked then. But what's crazy now is I kid you not, it's I we probably get five to ten a day of just oh. various cards and postcards. I've seen our letter come through because yellow letters using that same format still. It just looks like a utility one. So, yeah. so I mean, Rodney, the the answer to your question on how do you get <coughs> off market leads? In fact, I'm doing a class on that next Wednesday. So I'm already starting to try to figure out, you know, what's the, what's the most advanced ways. But the, the reality is, is that it's just, it's, there's no scientific easy way to do it in terms of finding off market. I mean, what you're doing in terms of sending a postcard, it, it could work. Like you could land on the right seller at the right moment in time who happens to have a wife, who happens to be a captain of an airline, who is just going to be like, oh my gosh, I am in love with these people. I don't care what they offer. They're buying my yeah. house. They're buying the condo, right? So you don't know if that's going to happen. So you might as well try it. And then you just kind of allocate some budget to it, right? And just be like, hey, this is going to be, hey, see you, Corey. Uh, it's going to be, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks or 200 a month. And then just call it your marketing budget. That's what I'd recommend. And then Add to that budget and just say, you know, so for me, I'm fine spending three to 5,000 a month on marketing. <clears throat> and so that includes CoStar and that includes Instagram ads. It includes, uh, we're just about to launch YouTube ads. We're doing all Good. kinds of different things. Uh, we just hired a guy <clears throat> who is now going to, he's manning our office, but while he has time at the office, our office is in a shopping mall. So we have to actually have an open shopping mall hours, which is so dumb. But while he's sitting there, I'm going to have him just uh, direct mail through LinkedIn because that's free. It just takes manpower to actually find real estate investors in various markets. So you could totally do something like that. And that's a freebie, freebie deal is just to find people that introduce yourself because chances are they may own something or know somebody who owns something. So that's kind of cool. It's much more organic, of course, these days, it seems. And then, and then it's calling. So like in certain markets with CoStar, like right now, I think we have to deploy 
I think we got about 7 million in cash that we have to use for down payments on properties in the next five to six months. So we're trying to buy a bunch of stuff. And so uh, we're, we're out we're just like going like crazy trying to find properties. So Wait, with CoStar, you can pick like a market like Waco, like I like Waco right now. And then we actually do a whole circle around Baylor University. And then we look at every multifamily that's in that area. And then one of my guys will just start calling and then just leave live voice messages. And then yeah. uh, the thing that works out different for us, I think right now is that we're able to say, hey, we're local. Uh, we own the property right up the street from you. And we yeah. would love to have an opportunity to talk to you about your property. So something like that. Hey, see you, Annie. It is almost an uh, hour, but. Uh, Thank you, guys. See you. Thank we'll see you next yeah, time. Thanks, you guys. We got to go. Take have, care. Have a Friday. Happy Aloha Friday. Um, Roger, we really uh, should get you uh we really should get oh, you I'm, kind I'm, of I'm not even turned on. That's okay. We can still hear you, Tammy. Thank you. Nice to see you, Roderick. Uh, Aloha, Aloha, Tammy. Thank you so much. Aloha. Hey Roderick. Yes, sir. Um, text me on the side. Let me give you um let me give you a date to come to Seattle for a training. Oh, bro, I'd love that, man. We were just Bring about it. to go to the best ever conference, and I just feel I'm not in the best space for that. Uh, what did you say about best ever conference? We were going to go to that and spend all the money and go out there, but I just, I don't know, is that that's the best fit? I feel like I need something more like you're talking about, some type of training. Best ever is great. So is, Bre um, you know, Brandon Turner's got a thing going. Ryan's got all these conferences are great. And I think, um, oh, best ever is um, Ken, right? McElroy. Um, I don't know about that. It's the only like big commercial. And uh, that's what we want to get into. Do you recommend oh, going to that? Well, it's kind of funny. We don't go to any more of those things because all it is to me is networking. And it's yeah. just. And, and it seems like everybody's there and everybody's networking. Like yep. Alex goes to conferences because we're looking to make certain co connections uh, for people that we want to like do loans with or borrow money from. And so, so he's really good at going to those events. I went with him for two years and I'm just like, bro, I just, this is not my space because I can't, <laughs> I can't meet people who are selling stuff because I'm on the buying side. Alex yep. is on the funding side. And Corey's on the funding side, right? So so certain conferences lend itself better. So like Alex just went to Miami. You're not very tan for having gone to Miami, brother. Yeah. What's going on, Alexander the Great? Alexander the Great. That's because I wasn't there. Usually we're out playing volleyball speedos, but you know, this time I yeah. wasn't with him. That was the major issue. But honestly, I think it's just the lighting because I have a pretty nice tan going. <laughs> <laughs> If I was to be humble and say so myself, I'm looking pretty damn good. <laughs> the tan is there. I was laying out yesterday. That's uh, great. Sounds awesome. I'm ready for so that. So what's up in Seattle, Kiko? If I fly over there, which I can, I think there's a direct Hawaiian flight right to Seattle. Yeah, I'll, I'll, ch I'll chat with there. you about it. It's, it's kind of direct and indirectly related to what – <laughs> what you're doing you're you're actually too advanced for it but i think it's the network of people that you'll find is going to be super well connected connected so we can just chat offline so we're not taking everybody else's time up okay nobody else wants to hear us setting up a date dude that's 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 lame does anybody else need the the date <laughs> they, they'll date they'll date you all day. I mean, look at that sexy head of yours. Oh yeah. And your assistant did send me a couple links, which I really appreciate. Wanted uh, to get data, skip trace people. Oh, okay. Which assistant? Oh, I'd have to pull up the email. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. We but do you have any? Uh, kind of a random. It could be Octavio if it's deals or Rafi if it is uh, administrative stuff. But uh, do you have any advice for the rest of us here for finding off market deals? It's 
Um, gosh, there's so many things. <laughs> so do what you're doing. Do what you're doing for sure. Don't stop because part of part of marketing is just consistency and just doing it for a long time and don't stop. I agree. So part of that is just fine. You know, if, if the picture of you and your wife makes you feel good about sending it out and you've got time right. to do the mailers, just send it, right? I mean, at some point in your future, it might hit. So that's great. And then now supplement it. And then like we talked about, look at the opportunity to do something along the lines of um, some direct type phone call marketing, much more personal. <clears throat> you just yeah. got to find the right lead source. So if Crexy isn't doing it, then switch over to CoStar. And if you want to do CoStar, I can see if I can get you a discount. I don't know for Thanks. sure. I, I have a discounted rate, so I'm not sure how I'm not sure how I got it. <laughs> but I could see if I could get you one. But CoStar is super, it's so it's so good, but it's so exclusive that you only get one login. So like I can't even share with you my login. And if you right. tried to log in, like they'll look at your geography and they'll like, it, it just, it's, they're really, really protected, which is good because it keeps the bar super high. So the people who have access are very limited because you got to be able to, you know, fork out 1500 to 2000 a month to even get access. So that means that the data in there is obviously much more accurate because they hire people to maintain that database. In yeah, fact, I get, I get calls from uh, CoStar all the time, and it's all these calls that just say, hey, just want to check if you still own this property. And I'm like, how did you find me? Because I'm an LLC formed in Wyoming that is owned by a holding company that's formed in Wyoming, that's owned by a trust that's formed in. So I'm going to have all these layers of protection, but these mm -hmm. guys are so good that they get my they get my cell number and they call on my cell. And it's like, are you serious? So that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, that's what sold me on CoStars. I'm like, hey, if you guys can find me and I am like four layers deep of asset protection, then, I mean, there, somebody's doing some homework on their end for sure. Way to go, so, Kiko. You just sold me on it. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm just telling you what I use because I'm too busy trying to... I'm too busy to go sit around and try to search for data because I'm just waiting for Alex to call me so I could go to Kauai with him again. What's in Kauai? Uh, spa. Let's just be honest. A really, really nice spa. I'm just waiting for Gary to call me so we can go back too. So we're good. Hey. So is it, let me, is it let me know who I need public? to call so we can go get our invite. Is it a public spa or is it uh, actually, you might be interested, Roderick. Everyone else is on, but nobody's showing their face. So we'll just have a we'll just have a conversation. Everybody else can listen in. But one of my mentors from when I sorry first started in real estate uh, became kind of a big developer in Kona and in Kauai, and he bought a ton of property from Alexander and Baldwin during COVID because A and B had to sell. So he bought it just literally at a steal. Like it, the pricing he purchased all this stuff for is. Like it's off market and he just was networked correctly. And yeah, so now on Kauai, he's building two different, wait, one, two, three different projects. And they're all in designated, um, I think it's called DBA. Is that right, Alex? Designated vacation, DV, DVC, something like that. It has legal vacation rental or legal nightly vacation rental. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I mean, it's like it's this whole area is zoned for it. So <laughs> he's building all these units and a uh, great investment project. So I'm trying to place actually some of our investors into some of those deals. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool stuff. Oh, that's great. And so the spa, is it on one of those oh, properties? It just happens to, sorry, it happens to be he lives in a, a neighborhood that is gated, protected, the starting points. Yeah. Starting points, home of 1,600 square feet is 5 million. So in this neighborhood, they have this designated spa it's a country club. slash country club. Yeah, golf course, country restaurant, club. workout center, swimming pool, cold plunges. Like, I don't even know. Alex went. I couldn't even go. And so it was. It's it's an amazing thing. Like it's such an exclusive place that you literally don't even like – Take, you don't lock your car. You don't lock your house. You leave your windows open all day, all night. You leave your car keys in your car at Foodland. I mean, it just, it's so bougie. 
it's crazy because nobody wants your crap because it's like it's cute like they, they can buy their own right right it's the compound super secure super awesome that's great yeah it's pretty sick that's, that's where you go when the, the whole world collapses which everybody's <laughs> predicting on youtube right now uh yeah. neil says well, off market deals from realtors and foreclosures daily.com for probates that's cool all right i gotta jump into another meeting but it's always a pleasure oh yeah it's Later, two o'clock mahalo Take care, you guys. Thank you, Kikoa. I'll shoot you a text about coming out to Seattle. Sounds great. All right, everybody. Thanks for a great Friday. Have a good one. Aloha, guys. Aloha. Thanks, guys.